Imagine that you and you manage in a company that uses Confluence as an internal wiki, knowledge sharing and community building tool that also helps them develop and improve their documentation. Your first task is to use the power of your Confluence profile to help your new colleagues know more about you. This company has a nice onboarding tradition for new hires. Every new employee writes a blog post about himself or herself. You don't have experience in writing blog posts, but you want to do your best. You have plenty of pictures, links and videos related to your professional activities and hobbies that you can use. So, let's begin our Confluence journey. The dashboard is the first thing you see after logging into Confluence. It helps you to get around, easily check the most popular blog posts, quickly find the content you are looking for, or access your own pages on the fly. Your Confluence administrator can customize the right-hand side of the dashboard, adding some useful announcements, links or photos. You can access the dashboard from anywhere in Confluence, choosing the site logo on the left of the Confluence menu bar. You can also set any other page as your own dashboard. Go to the User Profile menu, choose the Settings tab and edit the site home page. This way, you can start your work in Confluence from the page you need to access immediately. For example, the home page of your current project. Now it is time to learn more about your colleagues. Let's move to the People directory. This directory displays a list of people who are authorized to log into your Confluence site. You can list all users or users with personal spaces only. Spaces are Confluence way to organize content into appropriate categories. Spaces consist of pages. It's like having different folders with multiple papers in them. There are two kinds of spaces – global or site spaces and personal spaces. You can find global spaces in the space directory and use them to collaborate with your team. You can use a personal space to store your individual work and notes. You can either restrict access to your space or make it public to share content with your team, so that they can view and edit it. We'll take a closer look at personal spaces in the next lessons. Let's turn back to the people directory. Here you can search for people. It comes in handy if you work in a large company. You can also build your own network. Just follow some of your colleagues. Try to hover your mouse pointer over the name or profile picture of your colleague and choose the follow button in the profile pop-up. So, when someone you are following adds or edits blog posts or comments and updates his or her profile, you will know about it. Just go to the user profile menu and choose the network tab. You can also check out other user networks. Or stop following any user. Now let's improve your profile. Type in the name of your department and upload your photo. The last, but not the least, task for today is the blog post. We have already mentioned Confluence pages, 
that help you store and chain information to keep the knowledge growing. Writing a blog post can be a lifesaver when you need to quickly notify your colleagues about something or discuss things with your team cutting down on the amount of emails. If your blog gets enough likes and comments, it will appear on the popular tab of the dashboard. You need to create the blog post in the space of your department. Unfortunately, you don't remember its name, but you definitely know that it has something to do with lollipops and their production. Type lolly in the search box and you will see two pages in the caramel space. To create a blog post, go to the Create button in the header. This button allows you to create blank pages, but if you want more options, hit the Create from Template button. Here you can choose the blog post template and type the name of your blog post in. Note that now you can find your new blog post in the blog section of the sidebar. Go to edit mode to make your blog post attractive and engaging. At first, let's choose the basic structure of your page with the help of layouts. The Page Layout tool allows you to structure your page using horizontal sections and vertical columns. You can easily add or remove sections and change their order. If you decide to rearrange your content and change the two-column layout back to the single-column layout, nothing will be lost. Your content will be moved to the remaining column. After setting the basic structure of the page, you can use some headings to easily highlight any significant part of your content. You can always update your page. Everybody with an appropriate set of permissions will see the changes. Or you can just preview the page and continue editing until you are done. If you want to be concise and cut to the chase, use bullet or numbered lists. Confluence also provides us with such useful tools as macros. Macros help you to expand the capabilities of your Confluence pages, allowing you to add extra functionality or include dynamic content. You can insert a macro choosing the Insert more content menu, the Other Macros tab. You will be able to see the list of all available macros alongside with their categories. Or you can type a curly bracket and use the autocomplete, or open the macro browser.
Let's insert the expand macro that helps you to hide a part of your long text until you expand or open the section. It is a common situation when you need to share multiple links with your colleagues. You can create internal links, for example, to other pages or blog posts within your Confluence site, or external links to any website you want. Links to the pages within your Confluence instance are relative, which means that you can move and or rename any pages without breaking your links. To insert a new link, you need to click the Insert Link button. Or type a square bracket and choose the required item. Let's create an internal Confluence link. The next common use case is adding images to your pages. Pictures or photos can easily make your content more attractive and engaging. You can easily click the Insert Files and Images button or type an exclamation mark in. After that, all you need is to choose an existing attached file or apply it a new one. Now you can edit your picture using the Image Properties panel. The panel allows you to set the display size and add a border and some effects. You can also link your image to other pages or websites. As you may recall, when you hovered your mouse over the Insert link or Insert files and images buttons, you were given the shortcuts for opening the Insert dialogs. To open a dialog listing all the available keyboard shortcuts for your operating system in Confluence, you need to do any of the following. Choose the Help icon at the top right of the screen and choose the Keyboard Shortcuts tab. Choose the question mark icon in the Editor toolbar while editing a page. Press Shift plus question mark while viewing a page. The keyboard shortcuts are divided into three categories – General, Global Page and Blog Post Shortcuts, Editor, Text Editing and Formatting Shortcuts, Editor Auto Formatting, Wiki Markup and Auto Formatting Shortcuts. You can turn the General shortcuts off right here in the dialog. It is undeniable that YouTube is the most popular video sharing service 
where users can watch, like, share, comment and upload videos. You can embed any YouTube video into a Confluence page on the fly. Just paste any YouTube URL directly to the page in the edit mode. Let's see how it works. Confluence also provides an opportunity to use tables that come in very handy if you need to organize lots of similar information entries. To create a table, hit the Insert Table button in the toolbar and set the number of columns and rows. You can hold Shift to create a table without header. You can adjust the table for your own needs with the help of a user-friendly menu. You have all the familiar table formatting options – resizing columns, coloring cells, rows and columns, and sorting the table by clicking the column headers. You can also use the status macro that makes tables work for you. This macro displays a colored box with rounded corners that helps you track the status of your project. You can choose the color of the box and the text inside it. Or, if needed, you can reverse the style and choose the white background with a colored border and colored text. You can change the status directly in the edit mode. If you have a long page and need to highlight some key points, you can use such confluence macros as info or warning. You have created a well-structured blog post with engaging content that will impress your colleagues. Let's add the final touch, help your coworkers easily find their way around your page using the table of contents macro. This macro creates a table of contents based on the page headings and provides links to them. Now let's log into Confluence as your colleague, find your super blog post and like it. At the end of our lesson, let's sum up the following facts. The dashboard helps you to navigate around your Confluence site. The People directory allows you to find other users and build your own network. You can write a blog post to quickly notify your team about something or just share the content you want to discuss. Confluence macros, tables, links and images help you to create well-organized and attractive content. Confluence shortcuts may come in handy if you need to format lots of pages.